good audio has been the bane of my existence on this entire channel. Oh my goodness, a good microphone is hard to find. So it might be a little bit echoey, but here we go. This week, we are back working on the Captain's Quarters project. Typically, when I start working on a project, I like to have a pretty good idea of what I want to make, how I'm going to make it, and what it's going to look like in the end. This week, I do not have that luxury. I don't know what I'm going to make. I'm a little bit stuck on this project, but not stuck in the burnt out sense. I'm just kind of stuck in the having a hard time to commit to an idea since. So this video is really more going to be a vlog of me pushing through that wall that I'm feeling of not knowing what to do. Off camera, for your convenience, I have been staring at this project, trying to figure out what the next step is going to be. So there's supposed to be a hallway right here that kind of goes back into the spaceship and I think I'm going to mock that up in cardboard so I can get the general idea of what that's going to look like. And that will allow me to start building this outer wall or this outer shell of the larger spaceship that the captain's quarters is contained within. My inspiration for this area around here is going to be the inside of the Serenity ship from Firefly. There are lots of shots of the cargo hold because that's kind of the main point of the ship. And because I want this to be in a cargo area, it's going to be a really good reference. Over here, there's going to be lots of scaffolding and like a walkway and some lighting. And I don't really know what that's going to look like yet either. And I'm going to do this kind of like a vlog where I update you on my progress. And we will figure this out together. So here we go. I decided to make a mock-up of this because I'm still not quite sure what I want this hallway to look like. Doing this out of cardboard that I use to spray paint on gives me a little bit more freedom to just start cutting and trying to find a shape that I like. If I was doing this out of foam board, I would be really worried that I was wasting the foam board. Um, cardboard you can just throw in the recycle if you don't like it and start over. So that's why I'm doing this out of cardboard first, even though the final hallway will most likely be built from foam board. As I cut each piece, I'm putting it together with some masking tape and some hot glue, trying to figure out what shape I want. At the end of this hallway, there's supposed to be a false door that goes into what would be the rest of the ship. Of course, I'm not building that part, but it's, you know, the illusion that there's more ship behind this project. I'm using a piece of cardboard on the back of it. This is where the door will go, but it, for now it will help strengthen my hallway so it won't just collapse on itself. And this is going to give me an idea of what this eventually will look like. I don't know if this will be the final design, but for now it's a really good placeholder. So I have the hallway in place. And if you're thinking, Aira, how the heck is this supposed to come together? I'm wondering the same thing. That's why I'm now in this boat. So I think the next step is to actually start putting in some of the supports as far as this piece being lifted up off the bottom platform and this piece being lifted off as well. And then I need to build some supports for this to sit on top of. And then I'm probably going to stare at it for another 30 to 45 minutes to figure out what to do after that. So. Support time. Oh, we just leave it like this. That looks good. From the very first time I drafted up the plan for this spaceship exterior around the captain's quarters, I wanted it to look as though the 17th century part of this project was lifted up on some kind of hydraulic system. And what I'm trying to do here is create the illusion that this is a little bit, well, I, I guess, yeah, just a tiny bit <laughs> lifted up off the ground. After I did this, I was thinking it could possibly be lifted up a little bit more, but I'm, I'm trying to keep the project relatively contained, relatively small, because it seems to be getting bigger and bigger. 
as I add on the supports and try to figure out what it's going to look like behind these two pieces, that is what's going to help me build up the walls of the spaceship that is surrounding everything. I'm going to go ahead and turn this around so you can kind of see the back. By doing this, you are going to see that I'm definitely needing some support underneath the back of this hallway. So that's going to be a little bit more than just one layer of foam. Now I can go ahead and put the two initial foam pieces in place. I'm just going to trace them on so I don't get lost on where they go. It's time to make some commitments, so here we go. I always feel an initial hesitation when I start to glue something down, but I do find that once I do get some of the first things that I'm sure of glued down, that it gets easier and easier. I feel like if I don't glue anything down, then I just have this endless amount of decisions I need to make. But once I start gluing things down, I'm ticking them off the list, and I know that that decision's made, I can move on to focusing on another. For example, how I'm going to be doing the flooring on this base. I'm making some long strips of chipboard. This is cereal box material. Even though I'm using crafting chipboard here, cereal box material works just as well. I don't know if it's necessary, but I'm lightly sanding the surface of the foam board, so when I start gluing the flooring on, I feel like it has a better chance to take hold and not come off. I'm just going to bend this over the front part of the base. I feel like this is going to give me a nice finish on the front, and I don't have to worry about trying to finish the front edge once everything is complete. I'm using my 1-2-3 blocks to try and hold them in place as best as I can as I move forward. I'm using long strips similar to the way I did in the dressing room. I want to try and keep some of the architectural elements such as the way this spaceship does flooring. I want to try and keep it similar so that everything ends up with a cohesive look. So this is what it's looking like for now. I know a lot of the back area of this floor will be hidden by the large rooms that are going to go in front of it, but just in case someone starts looking around and looking underneath, I want to try and extend the flooring as much as I can. Because I plan to use a spray paint to completely cover the floor, I need to protect everything with a layer of Mod Podge. This is going to protect the foam from melting because oftentimes foam does melt when it is exposed to spray paint. I ended up covering both the foam and the chipboard with the Mod Podge. I've let the Mod Podge dry on this. I'm hoping that's enough to protect the foam because I am going to be using something called Plasti Dip. I've seen this used on the channel Rachel Maxi, and Rachel's used this on so many different crafts. She does a lot of cosplay, and she's done just random little DIYs, and I don't know, it looked like an interesting product, and I thought, what's a better place to have like a rubberized looking coating than on the floor of a spaceship? So I'm going to give it a try, see how it goes. I have this piece right here just to see how much this is going to possibly melt the foam. I really hope if it does melt the foam, I've put enough Mod Podge on here that it won't melt this foam, but it's always a gamble. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray it and we'll see. It doesn't look like it's melting it enough to give me any worries. So here we go. The instruction said to make sure and spray enough to where it looked like it was wet or it would puddle. And so this is what it looked like once I was done spraying layer number one. It's dried for about 30 minutes, so now I'm going to do another layer, and I'm definitely going to be wearing gloves this time because it was not fun to clean off my hands. The can is getting very drippy, so I do highly suggest gloves because it's starting to drip on my project and down the can. So, um, anyway. And I also do believe that it is eating away slightly at the foam. So the areas that have Mod Podge, I'm very happy they have Mod Podge because I might be having a lot of pitting. So anyway, I'm probably going to do at least one more coat of this, maybe 
another two coats, but I'll just, I'll let you know once I figure it out. It's the next day and my base is dry. I wanted to go ahead and give you a look. I like the effect of it. It did end up um, warping some of the foam that wasn't covered in Mod Podge. So if you do try this, do make sure to protect the foam. That way it doesn't disintegrate whenever you put the spray over it. Overall, it worked pretty well. There are a couple fingerprints in it because I just couldn't wait and had to see if it was dry and it wasn't. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's okay. So now I'm going to put it on the base. I'm going to put these pieces on top of it. You really aren't going to see that much of what I have done here because the pieces are going to block a lot of the floor. However, I think it'll all be worth it in the end because I want to make sure that, you know, if, if someone's just really curious and wanting to look in the background, I want them to see that I covered my bases or I covered my base. So now that I have some of the base complete, I'm going to continue adding some supports back here so that I can start to line up where this upper hallway is going to be. So then I can hopefully start building on some walls in this area. So let's do that. In this video, you're going to see me putting the pieces on and taking them back off many times. This is because I'm still not quite sure what I want things to look like, and so I'm checking at every single step that I still like the direction I'm going in. I cut a piece of foam into several pieces, or I just cut grooves, and then I started popping pieces off. This is going to be the support that's going behind the dressing room to help hold up the hallway. This might look like a pile of trash and in some aspects it is, um, but we're getting closer or I'm getting closer to figuring out where I want these large objects to work in 3D space. Um, before doing this exercise they were kind of conceptual on paper, um, but it's a whole different thing doing it in 3D. So having these individual pieces help me move things around and figure it out is really helpful. While this stack of foam, which is just basically a support, is going to be mostly hidden by the dressing room, you still will be able to see it if you look really hard. So I want to cover it with something to basically make it blend into the background. I glued them all together, I used some sandpaper just to knock off any of the large bits of foam, like, the, like when you break it apart you just kind of get chunks. What I'm going to do is a very, very simple, quick, paper mache process with paper towels. I'm just taking some glue, mixing it into water, and I'm just going to use paper towels and drape it over the piece. I don't know why I decided to do this. I think maybe in my mind it looks a little bit more like fabric, so maybe it's a hydraulic lift that's covered in fabric. Maybe it's a storage area that has been canvassed off, but I'm going to be painting it black so that you really can't tell what it is and it just kind of blends in and becomes something that's not important. But washing your hands is important. I'm setting this in front of a fan so hopefully it will dry quickly and I can continue on with the process. I'm going to be using this gorgeous giant drafting triangle which I'm super excited about, probably more excited about than I should be, and I'm going to be straightening out some of my foam. I don't always cut the foam straight whenever I'm just trying to take a chunk off of it, so I always like to make sure that I have a 90 degree angle. While the support is drying, I'm beginning to cut the walls that are going to go on the exterior or around the original captain's quarters. I'm not really sure what size they are going to be. I'm just starting with the side piece and then I'm going to move on to the back piece, which is much larger. So of course that's why I moved to the floor to make sure I can cut that as well. I'm cutting it a little larger than I think I will need so that I can put it up to my project and make sure that it fits. I would rather cut it slightly too large so that I have to cut it down later than cut it too small and then not have a piece that's going to work for me. I turned it around so you could actually see <laughs> what it looks like with the inside pieces. I'm just going to be tacking these in place with some masking tape because I'm really 
not sure what I want these to look like yet. So this is the best way for me to put them in temporarily. And having this cardboard mock-up of the hallway is going to be really helpful. Okay, it's time to stare for another 30 to 40 minutes to see where I'm going to make the cuts on this backboard. And um, then I'll be back. After staring and thinking through all of the possibilities, I realized that my structure or my support was dry, so I went ahead and started to paint that with black Mod Podge. This of course is going to help me support the hallway, so when I do finally make that decision, I know that I have as much information as I can have for this part of the project. So this is just going to look like this wrinkly fa black fabric on top of something that's in the background. This is what I mean when I say I want it to kind of look like nothing, nothing that will really keep anyone's interest if they do happen to see this piece. See, I told you you'd see me putting it together and taking it apart a lot during this video. Part of it is just the indecision and part of it might be a little bit wasting time because I'm not sure exactly what I want to do next but a lot of it is just trying to see the shapes and make a plan. It still feels like I'm very far away from anything being done. I don't even know what I'm gonna title this video, just doing random things, building with blocks, building with pieces of trash. Any of those might work. Um, I did quite a bit of staring and what I think I'm gonna to have to do here I'm going to do something called a cutaway and a cutaway is probably more of a familiar term with architectural drawings. That's where they're just drawing part of the building but they're cutting away the walls and to indicate that usually there's like a black line so that you know that that wall actually does continue. So I'm thinking I'm going to be doing some kind of cutaway maybe more of like an organic line so it doesn't look like it's supposed to be a line of the ship and my hope is that viewers that are looking at the project will realize that this is just a chunk taken out of a much larger spaceship it's just a view into the interior of something which honestly is what a dollhouse is because if you think of the adams family house it's kind of cut flat on the back and that's a cutaway. It's cutting away the back half of the house. So I'm doing a similar thing here. It, it's just going to look a little bit more organic and not house shaped. So now that I have that back support in, I have a little bit more of a plan, a little bit more, tiny bit more of a plan. I am going to use a pencil and try to draw out this cutaway idea and we'll see how it goes. Still a little bit lost this week, but progress is being made, so that, that's all I can ask for. Drawing these cutaway lines was a little bit intimidating, I gotta say, because um, I didn't have another piece of this pink foam board, I just had one piece and I'm just hoping that I'm making a good decision and it looks okay in the end. I think I've given myself as much information as I possibly can by stacking up all these pieces so I can make my best guess. I'm also adding another piece onto the sidewall because I want to continue that organic cutaway look onto the side so it looks like it's purposeful and there's not just a broken wall in the back. I'm also planning on having some scaffolding and beams that come out of these taller back walls go over the very top hallway and extend over the captain's quarters. I'm hoping to add some lights up there that will shine down on the deck prisms that I installed on the ceiling of the 17th century portion. So now I'm moving this over because I need to extend the floor. 
I probably should have figured this out before I did the flooring, but I was excited to see if the flooring would work, but that's okay. It'll be fairly easy to extend, I hope. This is going to have a walkway and possibly a door in the back that makes it look like there's more ship behind this entire display. So after all of this work and configuration and thinking and staring, I do think this is going to be my final foam building for the spaceship that's going to surround the captain's quarters. I took a moment to write down everything that I had in my head that I needed to do. I don't know if I'll get it all done in this video, but I make lists as I go along, which I find really helpful. Now it's time to connect the two pieces that go to the floor. I think I saw this on Dolphin Magic Pro's channel where he was connecting two of these foam pieces and he used toothpicks and glue. I think that's where I saw it. Um, I'm just going to be adding some tacky glue to where the toothpicks are going into the foam. I'm going to let that dry just for a little bit so it can tack up and that's to keep the toothpicks from completely sliding into the existing foam base so that they can hold their own a little bit and I'm hoping there will be half a toothpick in either side and this will help me connect my two pieces. So I'm carefully sliding this on trying to keep it as lined up as possible and then I'm going to to take a hammer and start hammering it into place and I'm just doing this lightly so I don't dent the foam. Once I have it together I wipe away any excess glue and let it dry. While it's drying I am going to trace my hallway shape onto this back piece because this is where I want to insert 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 a door later on, so I'm just going to do that now. It's the beginning of day three. I just kind of found a place to stop last night and rest, relax. It's a good idea to just take a break in the middle of large projects. I wanted to take a minute to talk about the ugly stage of miniature projects. Every single miniature project is going to have an ugly stage where it just kind of looks like a mess. We all have these visions in our mind of what the project is supposed to look like and when we end up just kind of having a jumble of things or right now I'm having issues with the drawing that I drew not quite matching up with the vision that is happening once everything is in 3D. Um, when those things happen it can be discouraging but once you push through the ugly stage it just starts kind of snowballing into a better and better project. You add detail, you add paint, you add accessories and colors and all sorts of different things and it starts to transform from this lump of randomness into an actual project. That's my coffee cup for the day. Hint, hint. <laughs> I'm not a natural winker. Hint, hint. The struggle for me personally as a YouTuber is that I need to create a thumbnail that's engaging and exciting so that you want to click on it and see how I made that thing in the thumbnail. Um, I really don't know how I'm going to do that for this one because I posted on Facebook yesterday a picture of this and people were like, what, what, are, what is that? What, what are you making? <laughs> uh, which is the response I expect because it really doesn't look like any single thing. So I always try to wrap up my videos with a finale or, you know, this is what it all came together to look like. And I just don't know if this video is going to have that type of an end. It may just kind of end in some more vagueness where it, it doesn't really look like anything yet. And I'm trying to just be okay with that. This is just the process of making a large miniature project. Sometimes you're just not going to finish up one single thing. It's just going to be a mixture of things and eventually it starts to come together, but it's just going to feel like a blob of randomness for a while. 
So I still have the rest of today to work on this and add some more detail. I'm going to try to extend the floor over here and also work on these back walls so that I can continue to make it look a little bit more like the inside of a spaceship and not just pink insulation foam. I did get a lot of inspiration for details I want to add, so I went on a little bit of a craft shopping spree, which I will show you at the end of the video. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to employ all of them in this video. Maybe I'll continue this on to next week um, because I really don't want to put it all away. I'm, I feel like I'm kind of in the middle of something, even though it feels like the end of the video. But I got some supplies that are ready to go for the next time I'm working on this, whenever that happens to be. And uh, it's really going to start to bring the spaceship part of Captain's Quarters to life. So that's enough talking. I'm going to continue on the process of working on this lump. You saw me trace the outline of the hallway the previous day, so now I'm going to make something of a door shape from that. It's not going to be quite as big as the hallway because the door is going to be at the end of the hallway, but I want to get a similar shape. I'm using an awl to poke all the way through the foam board because I'm going to have to cut from the front of the foam board and the back of the foam board in order to get all the way through it because my blade is not long enough to cut all the way through from one side. Once I get it cut, I'm going to start pushing on it, trying to pop it free, and of course going back and cutting any spots where I didn't quite get it all the way. But once it's out, I have a nice little door that's going to hopefully eventually have an infinity mirror in it so it looks like a really long hallway. Then it was time to extend my floor. Basically, I'm going to be adding some dollhouse bandages, which I used previously in a Beetlejuice video. This is just going to continue to support these two pieces and hopefully connect them together forever. It's just some computer paper, which I put quite a bit of glue on. I'm covering up the gap between the two pieces and allowing that glue to dry. And this is kind of putting on an extra shell on the outside of glue. I did the same thing for the piece I added onto the sidewall. So I'm going to let those dry and then I can continue on with my floor. I'm not going to show too much of this because I'm doing the exact same steps I did at the beginning of the video. I'm cutting out chipboard pieces and then gluing them down to the board. This side you will see a lot of the floor so I'm trying to make sure and stagger any of those lines in between. Now I need to work on the side walls because I want to do all the spray paint at the same time. I'm going to use some more chipboard and I'm trying to figure out what size panels I want to put on the back wall. I'm trying to keep them fairly large because this is going to cut down on my time it's going to take to glue all the pieces down. I ended up liking the size of the pieces I got when I cut my chipboard panels in quarters and so I'm just going to be using that size all over the entire ship. This is going to give me a pretty good background for adding greeblies on later, which is just the addition of random pieces to make it look as like it's just a very complicated spaceship. Once I get everything glued on and I'm just kind of eyeballing the grid, I didn't measure it out or anything, I'm just trying to keep everything spaced out. I'm turning it over and I'm using my blade to cut through any pieces so that it lines up exactly with my cut that I have on the wall. Once I'm done with this process, I have a large wall that just has a little bit more complexity to it than it would have previously if I just left it flat. So I did that with the larger back wall as well. Once it all goes together, I think it looks pretty good. I, I do think it looks like maybe the interior of a cargo ship bay. And I'm putting all the pieces together again <laughs> so I can see how it's all showing up. This is also going to help me see which parts of the wall you will be able to see really easily. I don't have enough Plasti Dip to cover these entire panels. So part of it is going to be covered with this mixture of black Mod Podge and, or black paint and Mod Podge, which makes black Mod Podge. And part of it is going to have the Plasti Dip. And this is just going to help me conserve the Plasti Dip and not have to use that much of it or have to 
buy more of it. So I'm covering up all the foam so that it doesn't melt, especially the edges. That's the part I ended up forgetting last time that did melt. So anywhere you see the chipboard, that I am counting on being covered with the Plasti Dip, and that is why I'm not painting it with the black Mod Podge. Time to Plasti Dip these puppies. I hope I have enough. Having to wait 30 minutes in between each coat meant that this process went well into the night, and it looks very dramatic sitting out there in the spotlight in my backyard. And I got really nervous about that red light out there. Turns out it's just the reflection of my camera, so I felt super smart after that. Ma'am, you cannot go out there. No, you can't go out there right now. It's for your safety. I once again let everything dry overnight and I was able to put it together for the final time. I don't know if you'll really be able to see all the details in the panels. I do think I will probably dry brush these with a little bit of metallic paint, which I think will also help the spaceship effect. But this is what I built in this video. Um, I will show you the black Mod Podge, I think because it's diluted with some acrylic paint, wasn't as strong as the clear Mod Podge I used before. So there were definitely some pits in the areas where I guess the black Mod Podge wasn't, uh, it wasn't covering enough. And so I did have <laughs> some areas that just don't, didn't end up looking that nice. So I will have to figure out how to fix that in the future. And I'll know that just using pure Mod Podge is the way to go whenever protecting from spray paint. But overall, I'm happy with the results. I do think it looks pretty interesting with the pieces on there. I'm still not quite sure if it's exactly what I had had envisioned, but there's still a lot more to do. So I'm not, I'm not unhappy with it. It's day four and I need to start wrapping up what I'm working on so I can edit this video and get it out to you somewhat on time. I am gonna be a little bit late getting the video up because we passed around the stomach bug a little bit this week. Super fun, but we're good now. So <laughs> I, I did want to show you some of the things that I purchased that hopefully I will be able to work on next week. Speaking of next week, I normally do my live stream the second Friday of the month, but I'm going to push it back because I am in the zone on this spaceship. I just haven't had the time that I need to finish up all the things I am currently excited about in my head. So I don't wanna put everything away. I don't wanna stop. I wanna continue working. So this is basically part one of this project and I will be working on part two uh, starting now, I guess. And then part two will obviously go up next week and I really don't know either how much I will get done for that, but I know I'm excited, so it's time to continue working on what I'm working on. So in this thing that I keep holding, what I have is, you can kind of see, it's very reflective. It's film that you put on your window to reflect or to make your windows look like they're mirrored. So I'm hoping I can kind of get an infinity hallway effect for this little hallway down here. Obviously it's gonna be kind of, it's not gonna be easy to have a hallway that goes back here because it would kind of be in the way. So I want to try and make the illusion of this hallway that just goes back for forever. I've never tried one of these before. I've seen NerdForge do it. I have a friend who's made one of these for her personal project before. So I'm hoping it will work, but this is something we might we might try next week. One of the other things I purchased for this project uh, was some bendable straws, and I want those to kind of look like vents and pipes that are sticking out of the back here. So now that I have a back and um, it has a little bit of texture on it, I wanna continue to keep adding some greebles or uh, just random things that make it look like a spaceship. I also have some greebles that were sent to me in the mail. However, I think those are going to go in the big main hallway because they're smaller and I think they'll make really good details 
for that big cardboard hallway that I built that's going to go on that side. So these are more for the wall. I wanted something big and clunky that will grab your attention and let you know, hey, there's something going on on that back wall. Um, so yeah, I think my laser cutter and my 3D printer will be hard at work for me. Um, actually this week, cutting all these big pieces and uh, doing all of the spray paint has really left me in some hand pain. So I'm definitely going to be relying on those machines to help me get through this kind of big part of the project. But I'm hoping it will start to come to life more and more as I get all of these components to come together. I really don't feel like I'm that tall, but my goodness. <laughs> so that's all I have for you for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was maybe a good look into sometimes miniatures don't have that oh, moment for a while sometimes it's going to be a grind to get through the ugly stage or the in-between stage or the is this working stage in order to get to something that's actually exciting and something you want to share i hope you all had an amazing week I hope you are working on something that makes you happy, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Captain's Quarters deserves a couple lines for this, I think. I found a yellow marker. What are you doing? Are you painting? I don't think you're supposed to be up there. You're not allowed to paint. You need to get down. <laughs>